We know all too well how your nurse can tell holy at a time like this, Kathleen said encouragingly. We thought having a party a lady's present might make her feel more at ease. I know you mean well, ma'am. I apologize. For a moment, Cassidy looked like he might be sick. But he took a deep breath and let it out, then stood watching for the train. Well, could you folks at least go wait over there in the shade? I'm going to lose my breakfast any minute now. You all keep watching me. Declan and Joss laughed, then led their wives over to a shady spot to wait. The ladies sat, talked quietly. Their picnic campers at their feet, while their husbands talked about their farms and the price of wheat. They waited for what seemed like hours, eventually having to break into their hampers to pass the midday meals. They invited Cassidy to join them, but he was too nervous to eat. That sure does look good, but I just can't stomach a bite, he said, eyeing the tins of food they'd set out warily. If that old train doesn't get here soon, someone's going to have to revive me. As if to punctuate his words, a far-off train whistle sounded. Its ringing cry echoed off the mountains. Instead of looking relieved, Cassidy only turned an even paler shade of gray, a feat that would have seemed impossible due to his deeply sun-darkened skin. Oh, no. She's here. Okay. Do I look all right? I mean, I rode out here pretty fast. Am I covered in dust? he asked, brushing at imaginary specks of road dirt dotting his shirt. The black plume of smoke that rose up above the tree line signaled the train's approach just as surely as its mournful, echoing whistle. Cassidy turned deathly white as it chugged closer and closer to the wooden depot, so much so that Declan and Joss thought to go to him just in case he were to faint. "'She's to be here any second, he said, his voice cracking a little as he faltered. "'What if she don't like it here? What if she gets homesick or doesn't take a shine to me or is she what if she's ugly declan whispered from the side of his mouth prompting josh to elbow him sharply in the ribs before stepping closer to cassidy campbell stop your fretting man twill be fine you'll see surely she did not come all the way to montana just to turn tail and leave because she does not take to men such as you <laughs> i know it's just a case of the nerves that's all he admitted although he didn't look any calmer for acknowledging it. Within mere minutes, the train came into full view, its great black locomotive charging closer. Cassidy's earlier nerves were replaced with an eagerness to meet this woman who'd agreed months ago to become his wife. Everything moved in slow motion. The train arrived, the interminable wait for the posters to open the doors passed, and the passengers began to emerge all while Cassidy felt as though he was swimming. The same feeling came over him of being back in Georgia, cooling off in the heat of another endless summer day by submerging himself in the creek, letting the water wash around his eyes and fill his ears until he couldn't see or hear clearly. Campbell, what are you doing? She's here, man, go! Josh urged, giving Cassidy a slight shove in the back to propel him forward. What? he asked snapping out of his daze and looking around. "'Is that not her there?' Declan asked, pointing to a young lady standing all alone on the platform. She had the telltale trunk waiting at her feet, the veritable sign of a westward bride coming to meet her husband and bringing her worldly and household goods with her. 